So here we are, folks, getting ready to do another video on our upgrades, products we use, enhancements to the travel trailer, and improvements. We'll go over a few products, and we'll probably have follow-up videos in more detail on some of these. But at a high level, these are some of the things that we're uh, looking forward to installing and using this summer on our four-week road trip up to Nova Scotia. Enjoy! We're going to review a few of our products that we bought or acquired for the travel trailer today. I'm going to go over some of the upgrades I'm trying to make, some of the enhancements, some fixes, and so on, and go over each one of these items that are laying here. Had a nice uh, snowfall last week. We got about 12 inches. It's finally starting to thaw and some of the snow is melting off the roof of the RV here but today I'm going to go over some of the products projects upgrades and so on that we're contemplating for this guy we've already done a couple a lot more to be done first let's talk batteries here's a new battery box I bought You know, this RV came with one 12 volt battery. The deep cycle marine type is standard in most RVs. And it was two years old after when I bought this. Um, so I planned on upgrading, and what I did, I got a battery box and went, upgraded to two 6 volt golf cart batteries. I would like to go with four eventually, but there's no room on the tongue jack here. I would have to redo quite a few things. So onto my battery station here in the garage. This is the old 12 volt battery that came with the RV, which is two or three years old now. It's an Exide deep cycle battery. I'm just keeping it charged up over the winter. Could still have a use for it here and there. These are my replacement golf cart batteries. I got two six volt door cell golf cart batteries from Sam's Club. And I've used these already on two outings, and they worked really well for a couple nights at boondocking. So I think they'll be sufficient for our needs on our big vacation this summer. The four weeks up in Nova Scotia and Cape Breton, Quebec City. So the battery situation, I think I have under control for this summer. Should be good to go. Going to get our charge controller hooked up and the inverter hooked up which I'll cover in a few minutes here some other must-have electrical items in my opinion are this 30 amp converter plug that you could plug into your regular 15 amp circuit at home just won't be able to run your air conditioner and things like that but you'll be able to operate your slides and then the other low draw appliances or equipment and another must-have in my opinion is this progressive industries surge protection and power conditioner I opted to get the EMS PT 30 X which is an external unit that you would plug onto your um, electrical pole at the RV site keeps you protected from things like faulty ground wiring um, reverse polarity and any other number of low voltage high voltage situations other projects coming up on the electrical side I need to mount this solar controller I also bought another cable for it because I was thinking of mounting it in here I was thinking of using this ZAMP controller plug-in to hook it to the battery since it's already pre-wired so I'll mount the controller in here when I use it I'll just open this bay and plug it in now everyone says the ZAMP controller has reverse polarity positive negative I'm aware of that so I did buy another 
cord. Another connector cord here in this pile that I'll be using to hook up the controller and I'll just reverse the leads on the controller and we should be good to go. The other item I picked up is the 600 watt pure sine inverter. I figured this will be useful for small things like charging up laptops, but we won't be using this for any major appliances or anything that draws a lot of amps. The other thing I liked about this one, it has a remote on and off switch. So you can see here, which I can mount inside the, the coach. I was thinking of mounting this close to the battery bank, probably back by the beds. Yeah, so what I'm thinking on the the inverter, we already have in our bed room here two outlets for shore power, one on each side of the bed. I was thinking of paralleling those with the inverter outlets and also mounting that on off switch for the inverter in this area as well. So it'll be close to the battery bank, the inverter won't need that much wiring from the plugs and the outlets. The shorter wire distance the better. And we have the on and off switch which is a really nice feature. Another purchase I made is this um, Blackwater tote. I had a smaller one but I figured if we're at a site, you know, I needed a bigger one to accommodate the size of the Blackwater tank. And what I really like about it, it has rubber tires and also has a nice handle you hook onto your trailer hitch and you're able to tow that guy to the dump station. So yeah it's a 42 gallon super tank brand name is Barker that will be stored in the pickup truck bed. Another thing I purchased was this um, family size tent off Woot.com had a tremendous sale on it. It was only $40 and I thought it would be a good addition just to take along for any unforeseen times when you might need a tent or on those trips where you might have family members with kids and need some extra room to, to camp out. That'll serve the purpose here. So brand new seven sleeper family tent from Woot.com. I picked up a tire monitoring system that was on sale for Man McNally. I've used it on my cars. It's okay, but I'm not sure it's going to satisfy the requirements. I'm probably going to have to get a new one that can monitor eight tires instead of four. But temporarily, this will be able to monitor at least four of the tires while I'm towing. Another thing I picked up were some some new wheel chocks. See if you can see those. We got the hard rubber chocks here. Originally, the owner of this RV had the plastic ones, and a couple of them were half crushed. So I got four of these hard rubber chocks. Nice heavy duty chocks. They should last a lifetime. Picked up a couple boxes of these massive wet wipes. Shower replacement for when you're boondocking. You know, you really need to conserve water. So we're going to give these a try. Got a couple boxes. It's a shower replacement. They're called Epic Wipes. Epic wipes for epic lives. Here's where I repurposed um, one of the battery boxes after I bought the new one. This is going to be for my external antenna wiring. I have a cellular antenna and a Wi Fi antenna, and I rigged up a mount, flagpole mount, on the side of the ladder here. And you could adjust that flagpole mount and get that guy 
10 or 15 feet up in the air. I still need to do a little refinement on the system for raising and lowering. But so far I'm real happy with it. It's going to work out great. I attached the flagpole to the ladder using these pipe connectors. So you see we have a large two inch one on this side with a threaded rod and on this side on the ladder I'm not sure what size that is maybe one inch three eighths no not three eighths maybe seven eighths one inch somewhere in there and then the threaded rods and I put these everywhere I could all the way up the ladder so right now I got six of those and it's really solid it's not going anywhere I also anchored it in the box here. In the box what I did, I bolted that box down to the bumper with some U, some U bolts. And then I bolted the box to the pole with two U bolts. The base is solid, it's not going anywhere. So it's anchored really well. This box will be for storing the extra wire or antenna cables when I raise and lower the antenna it'll take up the slack that'll be stored in here with a nice uh, cover on it so wire storage box I still need to route the, the cables underneath the RV temporarily I have them routed from the TV over top the slide out and it's coming out through this window right now and the wire will just come down and hook up to the antenna connectors so let me go over my connectivity with you there's my directional Wi-Fi antenna it's not only directional it's unidirectional so you need to rotate it and point it to the source of the Wi-Fi this is the Wilson cell antenna we'll be mounting out on the outside antenna post. I keep it inside during the winter, keep it out of the elements. I also have a router and booster for the cell antenna. I also have a, a booster for the Wi-Fi. So I have two ways to get Wi-Fi. In the campground I have a Wi-Fi antenna and booster that will set up my own hotspot and if we don't have Wi-Fi we're going to try cellular so the cellular antenna will come in I'll have it boosted it'll convert to Wi-Fi and I'll have another router hotspot for cellular Wi-Fi if we need it so here's the entertainment center in the Rockwood travel trailer first thing I did was replace the AC TV with a 12 volt DC TV from Insignia, which is a Best Buy brand. That guy's working great. And here it is. Let's start with the Wi Fi. So we have the directional Wi Fi antenna outside. I have the cables coming in now, just up here. This is the cellular cable and the smaller one here is the Wi-Fi cable for the directional Wi-Fi antenna. Have those running across here. Eventually I need to route these underneath the coach but I need to remove the bottom pan. Uh, you know it's all enclosed so that'll be a chore for now. What I do is I just run them from here right up along here. I run them up here over the edge of the slide out which keeps them out of the way then I just drop them right down here and go right out the window to the antenna hookup outside so that antenna comes in it plugs into this alpha booster the booster goes into the router it's all DC 12 volt which I really like so you could use this boondocking and then the router access point there I just hook up phone laptop whatever to that Wi-Fi signal 
and we're good to go. So we can have a Wi-Fi signal, for example, in the campground it's week that we need to boost. Or I might park outside of McDonald's or Starbucks or other coffee shop that has free Wi-Fi and be able to hook into that and do the internet connectivity off of their free Wi-Fi. On the other side, we have the cellular antenna, which I showed you already. This gets mounted back on the pole outside. It's also directional. It's not unidirectional. It's a directional cell phone antenna. So that needs to be rotated also to get the strongest signal. Once that cable comes in, it hooks into what I have here is a Wilson Wii Boost. As you can see, it's mainly to put your cell phone in to boost the cell signal, which you could use in a car, or in this case, I'm using it here in the uh, travel trailer. Here's the connector for the antenna. Goes right into the booster. It's also USB powered. So here you go. It's the the Wilson Wii Boost cell booster. I have two options here for the cell phone signal. I have a Verizon MiFi unlimited 3G for five dollars a month. I discovered this off of the Cheap RV Living channel and Jim from Denver has a whole series out there on this particular unit. So I opted to get this. I've been using it in my truck. I've been using it. I tried it in the house with the, the Wi-Fi and hooked my TV up to this Wi-Fi signal instead of my indoor Wi-Fi. Was able to stream Netflix and so on. I could play music on my Android radio in the truck, hooking it up to this Wi-Fi. So it's a really, really good unit, Verizon. Then I thought, well, what if I don't have a Verizon signal? I wanted an ATT Mobley, which is right above it here. But unfortunately, I was too late to get the unlimited data plan for $20 a month. That was back in the early part of 2017. But I did finally find one on the AT&T site. So I picked it up for $25 a month. I'm getting five gigabyte of data off the ATT Mobley. So that's another option. I also bought the adapter. This is made to go into your OBD2 port on your car or truck. It's only meant to be used in vehicles while you're traveling but I opted to pick up one of these converters so instead of plugging into the OBD2 port I plug it into the converter it's also USB driven put the USB in I have that option also either one of these when I'm using them will go into the cell booster fit right in there that'll boost the signal and this puts out a Wi-Fi hotspot from Verizon, and this will put out a Wi-Fi hotspot from AT&T. So those are my connectivity options at this time. And we'll test these out really well this summer on our four-week trip up to Quebec City, New Brunswick, Nova Scotia, Cape Breton, and Maine. This travel trailer came with the IRV Technologies Entertainment Center which has HDMI, Bluetooth, and so on. It also has a nice speaker system. Speakers mounted on the ceiling, two up here and two in the back. And also one here, so I'm figuring this must be like a 5-1 surround possibly. But I was kind of bummed out it didn't have a subwoofer. I'm going, boy, it'd be nice if this had a subwoofer. So I was looking under here to see how I was going to wire the cell phone and Wi-Fi wires under the coach. I took these panels off, and lo and behold, there was a subwoofer behind this. Just all blocked in. So I thought, well, that's not good. You're not going to hear it. So I took this panel off. 
and I got my hole saw out and I put a speaker grill on it to let some of that nice subwoofer bass come out of there to make it sound better that was another small mod I don't think it looks too bad it's nice and even I put black paint around the holes to um, make it look better another thing I'd eventually like to do is mount the AC TV that I removed back here in the bedroom behind this slide out it's already built in it has the antenna connection back there behind the slide that you probably can't see in this video it has the plug in the AC plug and it also shows you where the backer is here to mount the uh, bracket to support the TV another improvement underneath the mattress in the bedroom is this storage compartment and the slid lifts up you can see the framing underneath here well it was all falling apart it wasn't welded wasn't screwed very well I took the lid off I drilled a lot of holes and bolted each one of those frame members on then I got some aluminum brazing rods and actually brazed together all the joints here to make it stronger it's solid as a rock now some other tiny improvements adding a door stop for the bathroom door here adding a door stop here for the sliding bathroom door it would slide back too far initially and actually come off the track down here which holds it in place so now it stops and stays in the track on the water side I purchased a few things I already have a couple drinking water hoses but decided to get another one it's never too many drinking water hoses if you have to go 50 feet instead of 25 and I purchased this hose it came with a flexible hose protector but I also use these fittings that came off my pop-up camper so I can still utilize those I also purchased a regulator in case the RV park has high pressure we don't want to blow any lines so we keep that monitor maybe down to 40 or so pounds per square inch picked up this water bandit which I thought was a good idea if you're out boondocking and you need water and there's a spigot without any threads on it this guy just plops on the end and sucks right on there so you can fill up your fresh water tank I also picked up a couple of these water filters which I will be using on the outside if I'm hooked up to city water or I'll also be using these when I'm filling up the fresh water tank for boondocking just to have an additional filter before the water goes into the tank another upgrade I have planned is to install this hard start capacitor on the air conditioner that way my generator won't be overloaded during the startup process and I'll be able to run my AC off of my new generator this is the generator I opted to go with it's a champion inverter generator dual fuel setup so it runs on gas and propane 3400 watts I think it'll run the AC fine we're gonna do another video on this later this spring when the temperature is high enough I could test out the air conditioner I have another video on this generator on our RV travels if you want to take a look at it picked up this cordless drill kit for raising and lowering the stabilizer jacks it's, it's a time saver it came with a flashlight also and both of these are rechargeable batteries so that'll be handy to have in the RV 
Here we have two inflatable Lucy lights, solar powered LED Lucy lights. Always good to have extra lights. These are solar powered, so you let them out in the day, they'll charge up nicely with the built in solar, little solar panel there. And they deflate, you can stack them up. You know, they're probably about as thick as a half inch or so when they're collapsed. Then you blow them up. And you get the nice, uh, nice blown up loosely light there. You can hang, set in the RV if you need extra light. Use them as a night light in the bathroom, whatever. Here are the slide um, maintenance products I've acquired. Liquid wrench dry lubricant. We'll be using that on the slide mechanisms. The gears, the... Uh, the side channels, you know, the mechanisms that turn and connect to pull the slides in and out. Then for the rubber seals on the slides, we have the rubber seal conditioner from Thetford. It's an RV seal conditioner for the slide outs. Another task this spring is cleaning the roof, going around checking the condition for that. I bought some Eternobond tape, the four inch version of it, and also got four tubes of Eternococ sealant just to keep that roof leak free. Very important on any RV. You need a tight roof. So I'll be checking this spring around all the vents, the AC, anywhere there's um, sealant to make sure it's not cracked and leaking. I used to use my 8 foot step ladder for getting up cleaning off the slides before I brought them in while we were leaving camp packing up had to clean the slides the toppers off and that ladder it just took up the whole back of the 8 foot bed on the truck so I got this Franklin 17 foot multitask ladder one of the portable ones that folds up It'll take less room in the back of the truck and it should still be high enough for me to reach the slides and clean those off well before I bring them in. So here we have a comparison of my old 8 foot step ladder to the new collapsible step ladder. It looks like we have a similar height. I think it'll work just fine. Collapsible step ladder for the bed of the pickup truck. Save a little bit of room. And it'll function just as well to clean off the slide tops. So here's the unit all folded up in the compact position. See, it's going to be about half the size, half the length of the 8-foot stepladder. So I'm sure we'll find a good storage spot for it in the bed of the pickup truck. So there you have it, folks. Those are quite a few of our products that we're planning on installing to help our travel trailer be more user-friendly and to make things work better, do some improvements, to have a good... Uh, vacation this summer especially when we're boondocking you know we may need a few of these things so we're looking forward to uh, a nice four-week vacation this year and some of these products will definitely help us out some of the improvements will definitely help us out so I hope you enjoyed the video we'll have some follow-up videos on some of these products and improvements in more detail at a later time Please subscribe and leave any comments below. Have a great day.